everybody, TechFest comes but once a year, and it's Microsoft's research turn and opportunity to really show off what they've been working on all year and wow the company and, and wow you, the uh, customer and viewers. And right here, we've got Neil and Matt, and they're doing some really awesome work with uh, digital imaging. Everyone likes to take pictures. Everyone wants to improve their photography skills, and uh, these guys have some tools, which are actually available now, that are they're going to let you do just that. But I'll, I'll let you guys give a sort of an overview and a better explanation than what I did. Tell me, tell me what you guys are working on. Um, so we're working on a number of technologies to let you take large sets of images so that you can capture a scene better instead of taking just a single photograph and okay. assemble those into a panorama or uh, try to summarize um, that scene with, let's say, uh, a composite of, of a particular action that happens. And we're looking at using large sets of images and also video clips. Cool. Now, um, it sounds to me very similar to a product that we already have out there, Photosynth. Can you talk to other differences or is this just an advanced version? Yeah, well, a lot of these technologies you'll probably see in our Photosynth product eventually. Okay. But, but these are things that we're pushing on in research, and we hope to, to transfer, be it the Photosynth, Windows Live Photo Gallery, any of our, our uh, uh, products that deal with digital photography. Gotcha. So sort of the next version of Photosynth may include some of the technologies you're going to show us now. Yeah. All right, let's take a look. So what's the first demo? Okay, so as Neil alluded to, there's, there's lots of reasons you want to take multiple pictures. You know, when you're out on a scene, we, we want to get people away from the idea of you have to take just one picture to capture a scene. We, right. There's lots of reasons you want, might want to take lots of pictures of the scene to really capture it in detail or to, to do some of the things that Neil's going to show later. But sort of the tip of the iceberg there is okay. panoramic stitching. Right. So here is... Um, a data set somebody sent me, it's 200 images of the Golden Gate Bridge. And they really like the Golden Gate Bridge. They really like that. Well, they wanted to capture every little minute okay. detail of the Golden Gate Bridge, right? So, um, and we've got a, a, a research download called Microsoft ICE that lets you take these images and assemble them into one massive panoramic image. And what we found is that people really wanted to capture a lot of detail. So 200 images takes a while in the current version of ICE mm -hmm. to, to assemble into a single image. So what we're doing now, we're releasing a new version of ICE uh, just for TechFest. And this is publicly available, you know, even outside of Microsoft. And what we're doing is letting people sort of point these really massive data sets at, point Microsoft ICE at these really massive data sets. Here I've selected all 200 images. Okay. And don't blink. And you just pulled that straight from your from your picture gallery. You, you uh, yeah, I pulled it straight from, um, from the picture gallery, right. exactly. And Microsoft I wasn't told anything about the order of those images, right? right? I just told it these were shot. Um, there's, here's a big collection of images. Go, you go figure out how they were assembled. And there, that 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 was in real time, right there. Yeah, that's right. right. It, it read all those 200 images in, and said, "Here, here's what I think the result should be." And the user says, "Yep, that looks good to me. Please, um, please upload this, and uh, I want to share this with the world." Awesome. Now, is there zooming capabilities? Can we go in and out? Uh, good question. So, um, so what happens now in the process is you hit OK, and Microsoft ICE actually has to go and uh, do a little bit of work to process all that and package it up to so that you can share it. So, okay. you know, user isn't really involved, but it takes a little bit of time to 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 do all that stuff. And the other big new feature that we're uh, we're uh, showing off in Microsoft ICE and will be available is the ability to upload these to the Photosynth website. Cool. Right. So you can upload these massive images to the Photosynth website. Um, oh shoot. Unf so, so after there's a publish to Photosynth button that's okay. uh, front and center in, in Microsoft ICE now. And after you do that, um, here, it, you know, it takes a little now bit. Is that the actual, that's the, your synth that you created from your pictures? So this is the composite uh, or, or synth yeah, Sorry. that, that we, we created from, the, from our pictures. So this is all the original detail that was in those pictures, except assembled to look like one massive picture, right? Awesome. You don't see the seams yeah. between the images anymore. And you know we're using the sort of famous deep zoom technology uh, to um, to allow yeah. anybody in the world. This is this is being streamed over the web, right? And and anybody in the world can now create these things in Microsoft Ice. And one of the big things that was missing in version one of Ice is you couldn't share them. You, you could right. create them, put them on your disk, and but now uh, we can publish these to uh, the Photosynth website and share them with anybody in the world. Very cool. That's awesome. And now what's the website to go to, uh, to for people to download ICE? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> to do we'll it. link to we'll it. Do we'll link to it. Microsoft ICE is, is going is, to, will be the first hit. You know, that's it's, it's that's Image Composite Image Editor, right? Composite Editor. That, that's All right, next up uh, in the same line of uh, demos is Neil. Neil, tell us what you're going to show us. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, four demos that kind of build on some of the stuff that Matt showed. So um, what he just demonstrated to you was stitching a panorama from a large set of images. 
So another way to take, let's say, 100 images is instead of taking, here we have an example here, taking a bunch of stills, mm -hmm. um, you can take a, oops, a video and just pan your, your camera across the scene. And we have some software that's essentially kind of a plug-in to ICE. Um, it's a pre-process where you'd throw your video at it. It would pick out a number of frames and then plug that into ICE and then create a panorama for you. So it's, so it's still images and video stitched together? It's basically pulling still frames out of your video sequence. Wow. But even if there's some motion in the video, um, that doesn't cause any artifacts here. So actually what's happening here is these people are being kind of taken from different points in time but assembled in the same panorama. So this panorama was all created from the video? Yes, and it's wow. kind of, you get these more organic sort of looking panoramas where you have different, uh, different people's expressions and different actions captured from different periods of time. You know, you can see that it's a little bit less structured, the camera's jiggling around. And That's great, now in order to really to make it work, especially as well as you have here, do you need to sort of do the full 360 video shot? Um, as long as it's continuous, uh, it'll work pretty well. But that kind of brings us to the next. Uh, the next. Is this one available for public uh, now? This is not, but we wow. hope to we hope to include this in ICE uh, soon uh, nice. as, as kind of an extra little. Well, we'll definitely be on the lookout for that. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, so uh, you had a good question, which is you know, uh, do you have to shoot continuously? Well, so one thing that does pose a problem is if you move your camera too fast. Right. So you'll get kind of a blurry video. So here's an example. If you were to just take the frames from this. Is that Microsoft Campus? Yes, it looks like it's uh, <laughs> some tables, some very- Eaten in that courtyard? <laughs> uh, but if you if you just took the frames from that and did a stitch, just like I showed, you get a result like this. So the, the actual panorama is very blurry. Mm -hmm. So we have some technology, and this is also so research level technology where it'll generate a sharp panorama instead. And it's actually de-blurring the image. Right. So uh, here you can see kind of it flips back and forth. Oh, it's almost giving me a headache now. Yeah, if you look here, <laughs> Like, you'll see that, you know, it actually looks like a chair after you deblur it. There's four legs as opposed to before where, you know, these legs are just kind of blurred yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's great. And here's just another example. This is just capturing this kind of tree. It's really, really blurry. I think you can see that. Um, and then kind of switching between the traditional panorama, which is blurry, versus the, the sharp result. Very cool. I love that. Well, will it work on just still images if I happen to just take a, a photograph that was blurry? Or does it need so to, to clarify have, the video? No, we actually have other technology that's... Uh, um, Should have figured yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have other technology that's for deblurring single images. Okay. Um, so that's still research level stuff too. But um, that's, yeah, that's, that's also something we're working on. Great. And what's the name of that? Is it just a, co a component of ICE? Um, so this is, this is where really just it doesn't really have an official product name yet this okay. is kind of a Valora perhaps <laughs> um, it's just a, it's something that we would like to integrate into ice and maybe photosynth later on cool. here's another thing um, that's kind of a slightly different paradigm so before we were showing cameras panning well another th interesting thing that you can capture with video or another interesting aspect of a scene might be an action mm -hmm. so we have some other technology that given an action like this where the camera's basically still maybe it's jiggling around yeah. a little but there's sort of an object in motion, uh, we can automatically create a summary hey. image. So this is like a stroboscopic image where you see the whole path. So this is this is something else that also we would hope to include. And this is kind of uh, almost a you know tangential to panoramas. You can imagine two different ways of taking mm -hmm. videos: one where you're capturing a whole scene, one where you're capturing a particular action. So uh, let's look at this uh, you know beautiful beautiful image of Mount Rainier right here. So um. Yeah, you know, this is actually taken from Seattle. Now, wow. this is probably not what you normally see when you take an image of Mount Rainier from Seattle. This is very, you know, iconic thing. This is probably what you normally see on a on, on a nice clear Seattle day. <laughs> so what we've done here is actually take um, a number of images in a row, and uh, what you'll see this is just a playing through a hundred images taken from an SLR. Because the mountain's so far away, uh -huh. um, the camera is actually uh, jittering just from your hand holding. Right. Um, there's also other things going on here where there's this kind of wobbling, and that's actually the atmosphere changing. Um, the atmosphere is distorting the image. And what our technology does is actually take advantage of all those different changes. Mm -hmm. So um, instead of in that jump video where we're trying to kind of represent each different change, each part of the jump, here we're going to take all that stuff that's moving around together and try to uh, compute what sort of an underlying good image should be. Oh, wow. We use these kind of w this weighting function to do that. And then um, you get sort of this result out. This is just another version of this. And I can flip before between the two. So this is kind of what uh, your input image would look like. 
and then the result that we can output. So in order to do that, you, you had to input 100 yeah, so or so pictures all from a, a, a still location, yeah, the same still location. Same still location. It's about 100 images, um, and we align them. So um, this is what it looks like before you, if you just kind of average the images without aligning them, yeah. and you'll see it's really blurry. And that's mm -hmm. because the camera's moving around. Um, and then That's amazing. I mean, you can literally see the like little peaks and cliffs of snow and trails. The glaciers and um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of little texture details here that you would never even know were there in this original image. Very cool. This is awesome stuff. You know, I used to think I had the coolest job at Microsoft, but <laughs> you guys, uh, you may have uh, one up to me. So uh, thank you very much, and I can't wait to see uh, what you guys do for TechFest next year. <laughs> Get to work.